Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Today, we're going to break down how someone can get to $10,000 per month in net rental income. I think $10,000 a month is a great number to shoot for. I think most people can live a pretty good lifestyle on $10,000 a month. But I realize everyone's got a different financial situation. $10,000 a month may be way more than some people need, or it might not be quite enough money for you. Whatever your situation is, I think $10,000 a month is a great goal, a great number to shoot for. So I reached out to Joel Miller. Joel's been on the podcast before. He's been investing in rental properties for 40 years. He's been very successful. His rental properties generate a ton of cash flow every month. And I asked Joel if he could come up with a plan for us and show us step-by-step how someone could go from no rental income to $10,000 a month in rental income. And today on the podcast, we're going to walk through his plan and show exactly what someone would need to do to get to $10,000 a month. Joining us on the show today from Erie, Pennsylvania is Joel Miller, We'll take a really quick break to thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll talk to Joel. A good deal on a rental property isn't going to last very long. To win properties today, you need to move quickly when a deal comes on the market, but it takes time to analyze a property. I want to let you know about an app where you can analyze deals on your phone in seconds. It's called Ask Rick. That's R-I-C for Rental Income Calculator. You can analyze a deal with the push of a button. You can figure out the rent, your mortgage payment, your expenses, and figure out the cash flow. If the numbers make sense, you can make an offer right there on the app, or you can send a calendar invite to your agent to see the property in person. Ask Rick is currently offering a free seven-day trial. Just search for Ask Rick in the App Store or go to Just Ask Rick. That's R-I-C. Just ask Rick.com. There is a ton of paperwork involved when you're getting a mortgage on a rental property. Lenders are going to want to see two years of tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. I mean, it's a lot of work and a huge hassle. Shaylee Ridge from Ridge Lending Group has a brand new loan program where she doesn't care about any of that. She actually doesn't need any paperwork from you at all. She's just going to look at the deal. The most important thing she wants to see is, does it make sense? Is the property going to cash flow? If it does, she'll give you a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Now, the rates are going to be a little bit higher than a traditional full dock loan, but it's still a great deal, somewhere between 3.9 and 5%. She can close quickly, and there's no hassle. She can even do a cash-out refi with this program. If you want to learn more, just reach out to Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. Rental Income Podcast. Now, a couple of things before we take a look at your your roadmap. So the first one is that the numbers you're going to be using for the purchase amount, for rent amounts, for cash flow... I, I assume these are all realistic numbers for your market, right? Yes, uh, they're uh, realistic for our area, and I would have to say that uh, in this part of the country, we've uh, we're kind of in the middle with uh, uh, the uh, value of our our typical properties here, from what I can gather, uh, looking at national forums and so on. I know there are markets, actually, you know, smaller towns, not too far away from here, where property is even less expensive and the rents are maybe a little less. And, of course, there are larger areas where uh, there is more expensive property and so on. And I would have to say, though, that we typically don't experience the uh, uh, bubbles and busts here. We just kind of... uh, chug along, uh, you know, with a uh, steadily uh, increasing value to the, the properties here. Although uh, we have also experienced what most of the country has in the past uh, year and a half, two years with um, uh, property uh, values going uh, uh, you know, going up unexpectedly. Okay. So you may just have to adjust for your local area. Maybe properties are more expensive or less expensive. Um, you, right. you may have to adjust your down payment amounts or your cash flow, but I, I think this will be a good 
starting point for anyone that's looking to make 10000 yeah. a month. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. And then the other thing I just want to point out is that this is just a hypothetical roadmap. Joel and I don't know you. We don't know your experience, your situation. And we obviously can't guarantee that you're going to make 10000 a month following this this roadmap. But I, I think this will get you going in the right direction. Yes, I, I, I believe that. And if you listen carefully here, you'll, you'll get the gist of what we're saying here. And eventually we get to the uh, rinse and repeat part of it, which is just keep doing this over and over and you'll keep adding to your cash flow. Great. All right. So now do you have like a hypothetical person that we're doing this for? Like, or I guess, are there, are there some assumptions that you're making? Yeah, I, I wanted to assume uh, kind of a bare bones situation for somebody. In other words, somebody that that hasn't uh, got a lot of money saved up and doesn't have a high paying job and uh, isn't a veteran that can uh, uh, take advantage of the uh, uh, benefits there in terms of, of getting a, a low money down mortgage and uh I'm also assuming, though, that you're you're willing to take a sizable percentage, perhaps thirty percent of your your um, uh, income, to put toward your housing and or real estate investment activities. What about someone's salary? Do you have an assumption on how much our hypothetical person is making? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, the initial insum- assumption here is that the uh, the salary, the the gross income. Uh, for the year is only forty thousand dollars at this point. Okay. Uh, so, obviously, if you have a, a higher salary, or if you have more money saved up than in my example, or if um, uh, you, uh, like I say, are a veteran and you can put even less money down, or uh, just you know anything that's to the better there, um, then so so much to the better for the uh, example uh, that we're laying out here in terms of being able to get to say ten thousand dollars a month in um, income from your rental activities uh, after a certain period of time. Okay, so I think this is pretty realistic. So the the person is making forty thousand dollars a year. They have mm-hmm. a little bit of money saved, and they're they're willing to to spend 30% of their money on housing expenses and real estate investing and real estate investing. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's go through this then. So what would be their okay. first step? Okay. We're going to buy a two unit place. Uh, let's call it a duplex, something that's maybe the same, uh, mirror image, uh, uh, floor plan on both sides or up and down, something like that. And you're going to live in one unit and you're going to rent out the other unit. And this, uh, I'm going to say, is going to be a $100,000 uh, duplex with a, uh, an FHA mortgage where you would be required to put down about 3%. Now, I understand that it's currently actually 35 but uh, for the example here, we'll just use uh, the 3%. It's not going to make that yeah. much of a difference Round in numbers. the numbers here yeah. as far as how things turn out. So you're going to have a um, $97,000 mortgage at 4%. For 30 years, that's $463 a month. You would have to pay out for your mortgage. But for purchasing the property, you would have that 3% down of $3,000. Plus, there would be some closing costs of a couple thousand dollars. So let's make the assumption that you got to have at least about $5,000 to, uh, you know, saved up that, uh, that would, would get you started here. Um, not a you know a terribly great amount, but hopefully doable to to get started. So that would, let's say you can rent out the other unit for seven hundred dollars a month, and if you've got a mortgage payment of four hundred and sixty three dollars, you've got two hundred and thirty seven dollars beyond that each month, or twenty eight hundred and forty four for the year. That is over and above um, what you paid out for your mortgage compared to your rent. However, of course, there's always going to be other expenses that are related to the property. Probably, let's say, $750 for insurance as an annual uh, amount and $3,000 for property taxes and maybe $500 in in repairs. And we're not going to assume that this first place is a dump or anything like that. It's going to be in livable condition, maybe even has a tenant already in place on the other side. So your expenses total 4250 but you've got the um, $2,844 uh, 
of the difference between the $700 mortgage and the $463, or $700 rent rather, and the $463 mortgage that you can throw against those expenses. So you're covering all but about $1,400 of your cost of living in this place. Going okay. back to- Let me stop uh, you there just for one second. So I, I think that's a great strategy for basically doing a house hack, that you're living almost for free. Now, right. is the you're thinking there that if you're living for free, then you're going to be able to save the money that you were that you were paying towards rent. Yeah, and going back to uh, what we uh, mentioned about uh, the thirty percent of your your salary, now that equals about a thousand dollars a month. So we are going with the assumption that you are willing to commit. Thirty percent, or a thousand dollars, in my example, toward your your uh, uh, you know your mortgage and, and, and expenses and so on. And if those things are being covered, then then this this thousand dollars a month is that you're willing to put toward these activities is actually going to go toward savings to help you get to the down payment on the next property. Okay. All right. So right. so so now we've got a cheap place to live. And right. we're able to save more than we would have otherwise. Right. So. We uh, we're we're saying we're willing to to put a thousand dollars a month toward this endeavor, but we're now in a position where it's only actually taking a hundred and eighteen dollars of of that uh, to cover where we live now. Once we account for the fact that we're getting seven hundred dollars for rent. Okay? Right. Okay. All right. So now our next property is going to be another $100,000 duplex. But we're going to have to look around a little bit and try to buy that property from a seller who's willing to take back some of the financing. We may not be in a position only less than a year later to get another mortgage from a bank or something like that because we just got a mortgage, uh, an FHA mortgage, and we haven't been paying on it for very long. So the next strategy would be to look for a property that we could buy by putting some uh, uh, some money down with a seller that's willing to hold the paper on it, or in other words, finance the property for us. We'd be paying the seller, even though the property would transfer title. This is, I'm not talking about a land contract or you know a lease option or something like that. This is where the property transfers. The seller holds a mortgage like they were the bank against that property. So. This seller wants a little more down than the FHA did because they have certain considerations for closing costs and you know taxes for themselves. So they're going to want five percent down, say. So you've got a hundred thousand dollar property, putting down five thousand. You're going to finance ninety five thousand dollars with this seller, and they want a little more money than the FHA. They want six percent, but they're willing to make it for thirty years, which would be five hundred seventy dollars a month. Now you're going to have to save up some money for that down payment beyond the $5,000 uh, because you're going to have some closing costs. But you have now the difference between the 118, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, the $118 uh, uh, negative cash flow and the $1,000 you were willing to put toward this each month. You've got $882 that can be used toward gathering together the uh, down payment and closing costs for your next property which let's say is a couple thousand dollars. So that means you don't have to save like nine months and you'd be ready to buy this, this next property. Now let's say that this duplex is just like the one you have uh, in the sense that you can get $700 for each of the units. So you've got $1,400 coming in in rent times 12. That's $16,800. You've got the same 750 insurance, the same $3,000 in property taxes, now you've got two units you're making repairs on. Let's say that's $1,000. And you've got a mortgage payment of $570 a month for 12 months. All those things uh, added together when you subtract them from the uh, $16,800 gross rent. And by the way, I'm assuming that there's not a vacancy thing here for the purpose of our illustration. We're going to assume that places are rented um, 12 months of the year, which is not totally impractical, right. but just, I just want to point out and making that assumption. So now we're up to having $1,316 a month that, that, that between our rentals 
and taking $1,000 from our salary each month, we are able to put toward these activities. Let's say that now we're going to go big a little bit and try to get something that's four units. But it's, you know, not as good a quality place. We're going to be able to get four units for $150,000, and uh, which is, you know, less per unit than two units for 100000 But now um, we are uh, we're going to... Uh, uh, you know, do that again with a with a, a private seller, five percent down, six percent interest, and um, that would mean we're putting seventy five hundred dollars down, a few thousand dollars in closing costs. If we take our thirteen hundred and some dollars that we now have uh, to contribute toward all these activities, that's only another eight months that we would have to save for that. You know, so really- we have. Like that's pretty incredible when you think yeah. about it. That this is a person that's only making forty thousand a year, and uh-huh. every eight months they're able to come up with a down payment to sure. buy another property. And it, that that really just shows you really the power of cash flow. That it, it's it's putting you in a whole different situation, a whole different world. Right. Well, the key is to have some discipline. You are still living off your forty thousand dollar salary and putting out a thousand dollars a month toward all these activities that the 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 bank on average says you should be able to the thing is you are adding to that forty thousand dollars with all this rental income and even though you're increasing your cash flow you're not upping your lifestyle just because you have a bunch of extra money all right. of a sudden right that's the key you have to maintain the discipline uh, to in order to uh, really get this this rolling down the hill here, because right. the rewards are going to be big down the road here, and you'll be like, "Wow, sure glad I didn't blow all my money uh, buying a bigger, fancier car and whatever." Um, when uh, I chose instead to, uh, you know, be disciplined and keep investing in real estate. Mm-hmm. And so. and one other question: so with property number two. And then with your fourplex for property three, you're mm-hmm. you're recommending that we do owner financing, and that's just because we can get into these properties with smaller down payments because we're it's what we can negotiate with the seller, not what the bank is going to want to see as a down payment. Right, and, and actually, the fact that it's so soon after we got our first mortgage that we probably can't get another right. mortgage yet yep. anyway, because the bank needs to see you know, some, some, uh, um, uh, experience that you have operating these rental properties and maybe a couple of years, tax years to go by where they can see the, uh, uh, tax returns. And then that's what they ask for is the tax returns to be able to show, you know, what the, uh, the income actually is uh, on these properties. So they want to see that you've got time and experience and they want to see that your time and experience has actually produced some profits. Right. Okay. So now you have be- what I'm pointing out is that you would have better luck uh, getting um, uh, financing from from a uh, an owner seller. Uh, right. I mean a, a a seller that is willing to finance. Okay. So, all right. So now we're on property three. It's a it's a hundred fifty thousand dollar fourplex, and the um, rent. Uh, let's say we can still get seven hundred dollars a month on the rent. Um, and uh, so it's like twenty eight hundred dollars, and that's thirty three thousand six hundred a year. Maybe about forty five hundred in tax, fifteen hundred insurance, two thousand dollars repairs, and then um, you've got your mortgage payment of eight hundred and fifty four dollars a month, um, which is ten thousand two forty eight. You subtract all that from your gross rents, you've still got fifteen thousand dollars in in cash flow for the year. Divided by twelve, that's twelve hundred seventy nine a month. So you add the twelve seventy nine to the thirteen sixteen that you had after the second property. Now you've got twenty five hundred ninety five dollars for real estate activities. Incredible, um, which of course still you know includes uh, the fact that that you're you know contributing a thousand dollars each month yourself, um, <clears throat> and and now. With that amount of a cash flow, um, let's say only about another eight months go by, 
and um, you want to buy another duplex. But this time, a couple years has gone by, and you're able to go to the bank now. And you're willing to put 20% down to buy, a say, a $70,000 duplex. And uh, that means you're going to only finance 52500 And the bank says, okay, yeah, we'll do 5% for 20 years. You know, they're still a little conservative on you, you know. So your mortgage payment's going to be $346 a month. So now this place, being a, a less expensive one, you know, the rent's only $600 a month here. Um, so you've got $1,200 uh, for the two units total for the two $600 rents. That's $14,400, say $700 for insurance, $2,100 property tax, $1,000 in repairs. And then your mortgage payment, $4,152, which is 12 times $346. So now you've got some more cash flow, another $537 a month. You add that to the $25.95 you had before. Now you're up to $132 a month in cash flow. Time to save for the next property. But wait a second. Let's start making it real here. We've been doing this a while. You know, we deserve a little better. Okay, let's buy for ourselves a $200,000 personal residence. We're going to need $40,000 down for that, and uh, we're going to finance $160,000, maybe 4% for 30 years. A little better interest rate, a little better time, <coughs> because you know this is a personal residence. The bank is a little more willing to um, you know, take a risk on us there. So we only need to save 14 months at uh, this $3,132 cash flow to cover the $40,000 down payment and a few thousand, 4,000 or so in, in, uh, in closing costs. So well, let me ask you a question um, on, on that yeah, one. Why not do an FHA loan again? Like why, why put down 20% for the nicer personal residence? Um, I don't know all the rules about FHA, but I think you can only have one at a time. I'm okay. not sure about that. Okay. You know? Okay. <clears throat> So, but it, I guess because your first one's still intact, right? Okay, okay, mm-hmm. all right. So, so we got twenty percent down. We have a nicer personal residence, and uh-huh. like, and I, I, and so you're you're saying at this stage we're gonna, you know, we've been sacrificing a bit, living in a duplex. This is really just to kind of reward yourself a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying that that uh, I I think I wanted to put something in this example that that gives people you know some encouragement or you know incentive or hope or whatever that sure. they're not going to be living in this duplex for the entire time right. it takes to get to ten thousand dollars a month right. of net income. Now, one little cheat code that I'm thinking of here, and I don't know if you've you factor this in, but you could potentially rent out a room in your personal residence to, to get your cash flow even higher. Are you factoring that in or is this just a straight up personal residence? Well, I, I did not think of that. This is a straight up personal residence, but here's the, the cool thing that now happens. You're able to get $700 or more now for the unit in your first property right. that you move out of. Yeah, that is okay. awesome. Yep. That $700 is um, uh, almost as much as the mortgage payment on your new personal residence you just bought. Wow. Your new mortgage payment's only $760, $764 a month. And you've just given up uh, living in, a, in a, a unit that you can now get $700 a month. Plus, this is a few years later now, and all the rents in all these places have probably inched up over time so that by now, you have, uh, by the time you move out of the unit that, that you can now rent out and assume this $760 a month mortgage on your new personal residence, the whole mortgage is just covered. Mm-hmm. It's like a free house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now it's starting to get real. You yeah. know? So let's say now that you're, you do up your standard of living a little bit. And now you're only willing, with all the cash flow that you have, of you know from uh, the prior uh, events. Keep in mind, after this 
property right before you bought your personal residence, you were up to $3,132 a month for real estate activities. Let's say now you just want to make it $3,000. You know, you have some more expenses now. Mm -hmm. So only about four months later, let's say you decide that you're going to buy a, a rental property that actually needs some uh, rehab work. It's not occupied. It needs to be stabilized. And you want to get a mortgage on it later. But how do you do that? Hard money lending. Let's say you find a vacant two-unit uh, duplex that needs about $30,000 in rehab. So you need like $80,000. Well, <clears throat> What do you say you take your $3,000 that you're willing to throw into this activity, save it for four months, gives you $12,000, which will cover, say, $10,000 of a, a down payment and some um, uh, closing costs and so on. And you go to a hard money lender and say, look, I'd like to borrow $70,000 because I want to buy this place for fifty. dollars and I need thirty to put into it. I'm willing to take ten thousand dollars of my own money toward this rehab. Would you lend that to me? I'm the I'm the hard money lender. I've been looking at you for the past three or four years, seeing what you're doing with your uh, acquisition of the other rental properties, and now you're networking with other investors. Maybe you're attending meetings at you know in our organization or something like that. There's probably one in your area like ours, mm -hmm. and I say heck yeah. Let's do it. So, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, develop our terms, which, uh, you know, essentially is an interest only uh, payment each month that uh, you kind of account for in your $30,000 rehab money is your, your interest payments to your hard money lender. So that's kind of a wash. You're in there, and, you know, by putting a few, you know, $10,000 down and you've got um, uh, $70,000 borrowed. And you get this place all rehabbed, and then you go to the bank and you want to borrow money uh, to uh, finance it for what it's worth at that time. Well, now it's worth $100,000. You paid fifty for it. You put thirty into it, and it's worth $100,000 now. And the bank says, well, we'll loan you 80% of that, $80,000. That pays off your hard money loan. Um, pays you back the $10,000 you put down out of your own money. And um, uh, you got $20,000 in equity, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, that yeah. you, which is, you know, on a balance sheet, it's nice. It's not cash in your pocket, but you've got equity. So now you've got this $80,000 mortgage from the bank, 5%, say 20 years, $528 a month. Now you can get $750 a month for this place. This is a nicer place. This is all fixed up now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's $18,000 a year minus your mortgage payment of 528 times 12 minus 750 for insurance minus 3000 in taxes. Keep in mind the property taxes are still based on what this place was worth, you know, before you did your rehab, you know. Right. So likely to stay um at that amount and maybe only $500 for repairs, even though it's two units because, Hey, you fixed everything mm -hmm. already. Right. Stuff isn't breaking now, you know? So, um, that, um, uh, you know, increases your, your, your cash flow, another $617 a month added on to the $3,000 that you were willing to put into it before. Now you got 3,617 a month. You're throwing toward all this. So that kind of brings me to the end of, you know, the different types of examples. It sort of gets to rinse and repeat here now. Mm -hmm. You know, you, every, you've got 3600 and some dollars uh, that you can, you, can uh, you know, you save up toward down payments and closing costs and so on. And maybe every six months you buy another two unit. Uh, to increase your cash flow by about six hundred dollars over the prior cash flow, uh, but keep in mind that that six month time period is going to inch down less and less and less because with the higher and higher cash flow, it takes fewer and fewer months in between to save up the money. Right. So um, after 
35 months, your cash flow would be 4217, 40 months, 4817, 45 months, say 54, 49 months. Notice I went from five months difference to four months difference, you know. You get to about 49 months, you're at $6,000 a month, uh, 53 months, 66. Now, say, only three-month intervals. You know, 56 months, $7,200, 59 months, 78, 62 months, 86, 65 months, 9200 68 months, $9,800, 71 months, just under six years, $10,400 a month. I love it. All right. And how many units are you at at that point? You know, you might be at 30 units or something like that. 30 units. Okay. And what's incredible about that is you really have done this with just reinvesting your cash flow. Right. By discipline of not taking gobs of your extra money that you find that you are earning and and blowing it on a higher lifestyle until you've... um, you know, significant. I mean, you could, you could keep going on. It doesn't mean like the $10,000 a month is okay. Now we're going to live like $10,000 a month. You could keep going by disciplining yourself. Now, six years to get to 10,000, six Mm -hmm. years is not a lot of time, but it is a lot of time. So I'm just thinking like, how can someone do this faster? And there's a couple of things that, that I'm thinking of, like, how do you, increase your cash flow and make your plan even better. And so the first thing I'm thinking is with the duplex that in property number one, where, where you were renting out the other side, if you wanted to, you could possibly get a roommate in your side of the duplex and maybe make a few hundred dollars a month there. Sure. It, I'm really not making any assumptions yeah. here as far as how many people are in your family. Right. Uh, if you're just by yourself, uh, you, what you just said, Dan, you're, you're totally right. You know, I guess in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this might be a, a married couple. And as they go through right. time, they're having some children and that's, you know, yeah, who so occupies it's, this, this bigger home that yeah. they built. But that may not be your case. Right. Yeah. So depending on your situation, I mean, you could get there even faster if you did that, and then with your nicer personal residence at step five, if you could find a way to put down less than 20%, I, I think you could get that nicer personal residence that much faster if you could use a small down payment. And I'm sure you could you can get a, a smaller down payment on a personal residence. So that's, yeah. that's just something to keep in mind. And then, like I said, if, if you could rent out rooms, you could increase your cash flow even more or if instead of a nicer personal residence maybe if you just said you know what i'm gonna suck it up and i'm gonna get another duplex and i don't mind living in a duplex um it, you're gonna just get to your ten thousand that much faster um and then yeah. i guess the other thing to point out too is with your properties it, it seems like you with the exception of um Number six, where where you were fixing the property up, you you weren't um, really fixing up a lot of the earlier properties. But maybe if you could do some upgrades and maybe get an extra hundred dollars a month in rent, like that might help you get there faster too. Right, and, and also a factor here is um, how much uh, time you have to. Uh, put into doing those Im- improvements as far as keeping the cost down goes mm-hmm, you know, your right. own time and ability that's true uh, to sweat equity in other words uh, could uh, easily with uh, the expense of just the materials uh, if you make improvements easily be able to get you a higher amount of rent that would pay off uh, in a fairly short period of time whatever you spent on materials yeah but yeah I, I think this is a, a really good plan I, I really like that they that you're relying on developing skills to get owner financing deals earlier on so that you're able to buy properties with a little bit of money. And then as you get more experience and more practice doing this, getting into more complicated um, deals with hard money and doing burr uh-huh. projects, like, I, I think this is great. I, I think this is a very doable plan and um, a, a very 
very good roadmap for someone to follow. Yeah, while you were talking there, I was just kind of trying to more accurately add up the number of units. And it looks like uh, at 71 months, we've got, uh, it looks like 36 units. 36, plus, okay. Plus your personal residence. So uh, essentially, you've got, um, you know, 18 two-unit places. In, uh, well, I uh, take that back. One of them was a four-unit in the example, you know, so... Awesome. Uh, plus your personal residence. And that is completely doable. That doesn't mm-hmm. involve trying to uh, find uh, unicorn properties that that uh, rarely come on the market, you know, that, that uh, you may or may not find along the way. And I'm speaking of, you know, larger apartment complexes or just plain, you know, nicer multi-unit places that are beyond what's an example here. This is just totally doable with properties that are always on the market available. Joel, thank you so much for taking the time to come up with this plan today. I really appreciate it. If anybody is in Erie, Pennsylvania, and you flip houses and you're looking for short-term funding, Joel would love to connect with you. In addition to owning rental properties, he also does some hard money lending and he would love to take a look at one of your deals or talk to you about financing. I've got his contact information on the website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 349. And again, this is just for fix and flip and just in the Erie, Pennsylvania market. I'd like to thank today's sponsor for making this episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. If you are looking to buy a rental property, whether you're just getting started or you want to add to your portfolio, the lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge. She's a nationwide lender, and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs, and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or you want to set up a time to talk to Chaley personally, just go to RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. We'll be back with a new interview on Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.